morning. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Um, today is Sunday, May 17th. Um, we're going to be doing some yin yoga today. Um, <clears throat> so yin yoga is a type of practice that is a little bit slower and um, more mellow than a traditional vinyasa flow. So um, when we do yin yoga, we're actually holding a few, much fewer postures, not necessarily in a a flow, an organized flow, but it's um, holding a few, like anywhere between nine and 12 postures for up to um, five minutes at a time. So it's a lot of a, a lot deeper of a practice um, in that you are holding something for a while and really getting into the pose and really relaxing into whatever variation you're in. And what that allows us to do is release tension in the connective tissues of our body. Connective tissues meaning um, muscles, ligaments, all of that stuff. So and, and in addition to all the fascia that surrounds our body. So fascia is is like a, a sticky substance that covers every inch of our body on the inside and all the way down to the cell level. And whenever we get injured or whenever we get um, or sore from something, um, that site of pain or whatever is happening, um, a, an excess buildup of fascia will start to like occur in that area to protect it. Um, so what we're doing in the in a yin yoga class and what's very similar with um, deep tissue massage um, or myofascial release, that sort of thing is you're breaking up a lot of that sticky fascia that's making it so tense and tight um, and allowing the muscles and allowing the um, connective tissues to just run or to um, move freely through the body without that excess buildup. So um, when we hold these postures, we're releasing a lot of that fascia, that tension um, in the parts of our body that we hold on, hold stress the most. So that includes our hips and our shoulders, our neck, that sort of thing. So um, this practice is going to focus a lot on our lower body. So um, we're going to get into the hips quite a bit and then a little bit of spinal movement as well. So you're going to want um, as many props as you can gather. So pillows, blankets, if you have something like a yoga block, um, I recommend getting that. So that could be like a foam roller or um, books, something that you can stack on top of one another to, um, to rest on. But if you don't have yoga blocks, I actually highly recommend getting some. Um, you can get them on yogaoutlet.com for pretty cheap or Amazon. Um, but anyway, so we'll get started. We're going to get started in child's pose. And with child's pose, you may need a blanket and a pillow to start. Um, so I will get this thing. So you're going to start on hands and knees. And this is where you may need um, a pillow and a blanket. So you're gonna take your knees wider than your hips. So this could be almost to your the length of your mat and then you take the soles of your feet or the toes of your feet touching. So big toes are touching. And then you sit back on your heels and you walk your hands as far forward as possible, so much so that you can rest your forehead on the mat and let your chest sit in between your thighs. So this is where you may need, um, if this is really tough on your knees, placing a blanket um, on top of your calves, right up to the crease of your knees, and then placing a forehead or a pillow underneath your forehead if you can't reach all the way down. So we're resting our forehead on the pillow and allowing our hips to sink down towards the heels. And then just allow the arms to be passive. You don't necessarily need to like Lift the elbows and press into the palms. Just let the forearms and the elbows and the wrists and the hands rest onto the mat. And we're going to hold um, this pose for probably five minutes to start to bring all of your awareness to your mat and to your body and to your breath. So if you're noticing today that you're feeling any sort of um, pain or soreness, tightness, anything like that, just take some time to notice where that is, where that's happening in your body. And throughout class, 
remembering where that is and taking note of it and making sure that at, at um, all points of the class, you're not pushing yourself so far that um, that pain becomes worse. So we don't want to ever push ourselves to the point of pain. Um, slight discomfort and challenging the body is good, and that's what we want to do in yoga. Um, but we never want it to turn into pain. So always recognizing that there is a fine line between um, discomfort and challenging your body to, you know, um, to do more work and to build muscle um, and build mobility. Um, and then also just pushing yourself past the point of pain. So we never want to do that. And also taking this time to start to deepen the breath so that your inhales and your exhales are equal length. So it's sort of this like long oceanic wave sound coming in and out of your nose as you breathe. And sometimes I like to count up to like five or six as I inhale and then count down the opposite way as I exhale so that I can really extend the breath as long as possible. So that's a nice way to practice um, controlling your breath. And it's also a nice way to like bring all of your focus and all of your awareness to the breath. Starting to notice any tingling sensations that have started to arise, maybe in the tops of the feet and the ankles, maybe in the creases of your hips. And with each inhale, allowing the back of the body to expand and open, and create space for new blood, new oxygen, new energy to move through. And with each exhale, you're allowing your body to sink further down, allowing gravity to do its job, to do its work. Finding grounding in the mat. And at any time where you feel like your thoughts have become sort of consuming and your awareness is shifted from off of the mat, off of your breath to something else. Anytime that you notice that, just come back to those deep, slow breaths. Just redirect your focus back to your breath. Noticing any other sensation that have started, started to come up in the knees, shins. Just noticing whatever's happening and embracing it and breathing through it. Knowing that all of these things that we deal with in life, any of those uncomfortable situations in life that we move through, that they're always temporary. And that by coming back to the breath, coming back to ourselves, turning inwards, can always reset us and always bring us back to zero, to center, calm us down. Very slowly, with your next inhale breath, start to rise up on hands and knees into tabletop pose. Maybe you tuck your toes under to just release those um, the ankles a little bit, 
Maybe you just roll them out for a second. <clears throat> Wiggle the toes. Feeling the blood rushing back into the feet. You may feel a little bit of heat and tingling in the feet right now. And then coming back to hands and knees, we're going to keep our hips stacked over our knees, but we're going to walk our hands really far out towards the front of our neck. And then we're going to start to sink our chest down. So we're sort of coming into child's pose, except our um, hips are stacked directly over our knees this time. And you're just allowing your chest to sink down and your lumbar spine to find its natural arch and resting the forehead on the mat. So this is, um, it's called uh, puppy pose. So this is going to be opening up the shoulders and the back of the body or the front of the body. So you may need um, you may need a pillow to rest your forehead on once again. We try, but the goal is to try to let the chest sink down towards the mat while keeping your hips stacked right over your knees. And this may look different for everybody, but the arms are straight out in front of us, shoulder width distance apart, elbows. Maybe they're rested on the mat, maybe they're not, but just allow your chest to sink through and see if you can find a pillow to rest your forehead on if you can't to reach it all the way down to the mat. And we'll be here for about three minutes. This is a pretty big shoulder opener. You should already be starting to feel sensations in the back near the shoulder blades in the armpits across the chest maybe in the spine just breathe deeply through it knowing that this is temporary Whenever you find that your thoughts are straying, once again, just come back to that breath. Come back to the slow, long, deep breaths. Few more breaths here. <laughs> and then very, very slowly, you're going to start to pull your navel in towards your spine and start to puff up the back, coming off of the elbows, off of the, or sorry, the, uh, lifting the elbows off of the mat, puffing into the back, and then starting to walk your hands back towards your knees. So exiting that should, pose should be coming especially from the core, puffing up the back and pulling the navel in towards the spine to protect our shoulders and our um, spine as we rise from that. The next pose that we're going to move through is a toe stretch. We're only going to hold this for about a minute because it is pretty intense on the feet. Um, so you're going to tuck your toes underneath you and sit your hips back on your heels and then we're just going to sit up straight. So um, you may need a pillow underneath, or I'm sorry, a, a blanket underneath your knees if this is hard on your kneecaps. And again, we'll only be here for about a minute, so get yourself set up, and then I start my little timer here. 
sitting back onto the heels, palms are rested on tops of our thighs. Allow your shoulders to move away from your ears by sliding the shoulder blades down your back. Pull your navel in towards your spine so that you have a nice, long, straight spine. And find the breath. This is, I know this is like a super intense pose, but this is really where we want to focus that breath control. We only have about 20 seconds left here. A few more seconds, come back to that breath. And then release. Back onto tabletop, tuck your toes, ground tuck your toes, just tap the tops of your feet on the mat to release that gripping or that sensation of the stretch of our feet. So feel pretty nice. And then you're gonna take your right leg. I'm gonna turn face this way for a second. You're gonna take your right leg and cross it behind your left. Both knees are bent. So it kind of looks like crossing your right knee behind your left. And then you're gonna take your feet wide. So um, rather than your um, calves and your feet sort of touching one together, touching one another together, you're gonna take them out wide. And then you're gonna start to walk your hands back to sit back on your, um, on your sit bones. Keep your feet flexed and you may notice that your left hip um, is, is quite high off of the mat here. So what you can do is take a pillow and place it underneath. Let me turn this again. Place it underneath your right glute, so that should even out um, the level of your pelvis, so that you can sit straight forward. So we're um, getting into some external rotation of the hips here. Is this external? Yes, external rotation. Is right. I'm not really sweating. Um, and this is uh, opening up both of the hips, right? So outer hips on each side. <clears throat> and you want your knees to try to stack right on top of one another and you want to keep your feet as flexed as possible to protect the knees. So again, if you're finding that your left hip is really lifted off of the mat, place a pillow underneath your right hip. And you're just gonna sit up as straight as you can. You can hold onto the ankles, onto the feet. Anything that sort of feels natural and good in this position. And I'll stay here for two or three minutes and then we'll switch sides. Come back to the breath. Hi. Hi, Snuggles. Oh, it's so cold. Let me see the Let me see the Oh, Snuggles. Oh, so cute. Beautiful body. <laughs> Noticing what's coming up in the hips here. So one of the times that we, when we're in these deep hip openers, we start to feel some sort of like anxiousness or anger, maybe sadness bubbling up because we're like, gosh, our hips, my hips are so tight. I should be doing this more. I should be doing this, this, and this more. I feel like I'm not taking care of my body, blah, blah, blah. Like a lot of stuff can come up when you're in a deep hip opener. That's just because we hold so much emotion in our hips. So let whatever is coming up, just let that go. Let that like roll through you. Let it come up and let it out. And then just we're always return to those deep breaths. We're only here for about 30 more seconds and then we'll switch sides. So this is definitely, you should definitely feel more of this in the right hip, the right outer hip, and even in a little bit into that right hip flexor. You 
we're slowly going to start to come out of this. So start to rock forward onto your knees to come back to tabletop pose and then uncross the legs. Take your knees out wide just for a second and just rock forward and backwards to just release um, the outer hips and the inner thigh or the inner groin here. And you're going to come back to tabletop pose. So hips are right over the, um, the knees. And then you're going to take your left knee and cross it behind the right. So we're coming onto the other side. Oh no, I just spilled my coffee. <laughs> you grab a towel. <laughs> Oopsies, spill the coffee. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so you're crossing your left knee behind your right knee, taking your feet and your ankles and your shins out wide. And then you're going to start to walk your hands back. Okay, we're good. <laughs> walk your hands back to come back to sit seated on your sit bones. And then you may need to sort of wiggle that uh, left foot out farther to get the right knee stacked right over the left. And you're finding that if you find that your right hip is really lifted off of the mat here, take that pillow and place it underneath your left glute. So right hip, if it's lifted, Place the pillow underneath your left glute so that you can get your pelvis and your sit bones square on the mat and or level with one another so that you're sitting upright and straight. And then keep both of your feet flexed. Sit up as straight as you can. And then rest your hands on your ankles or your feet, whatever feels nice. And take some deeper breaths. Allowing whatever is coming up emotionally, physically, allowing it to come into your focus and then letting it pass through and releasing it, coming back to the breath. Noticing what's starting to come up in the left outer hip. Maybe the right inner groin. And finding that breath. And back to long, slow breathing in and out of the nose. Very slowly, you're going to start to rock back on your sit bones, place your palms behind you, and then lift your knees off of the mat, uncross them, and just take them straight out in front of you. Then you're going to bend both of the knees, place the soles of your feet flat onto the mat, drop your right knee open like a butterfly, and then drop your left knee towards the right, so both of your knees are facing this direction. And then you're going to take your left leg, and grab your left ankle and start to pull it behind you so that your right knee is facing totally forward. And then you're gonna take your, um, and then your left foot is still flexed here. And then you're gonna take your right ankle, grab it and place the foot um, right on top of the um, left thigh. So you're sort of in this like triangular position, but this is um, called deer pose in yoga. I don't really, I guess, because deer sit like this maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love these poses, the names of them. All in the end, all the poses are named after animals, which I love because <laughs> I love animals. 
Um, so this should be feel, feel, especially in the left hip, it should feel really nice after going consonants. Now we're doing internal rotation of the hips. So if you see um, the right knee is inter or externally rotated, and then the left leg is internally rotated. So eventually we're going to switch, and it's just a really, really nice way to release after um, an external hip rotation um, hip opener. So we're just sitting upright and allowing a little bit of decompression, counterbalance or counter poses for the postures that we just did. Taking those deeper breaths. Very slowly, you're going to take your palms behind you and start to take your knees back up to center. Palms or uh, soles of the feet are flat on the mat. And you can just walk your feet out in front of you again. And this time, we're going to drop that left knee open. Um, outer edge of our left foot is on the mat. And then we're going to take our left or right knee um, to face the left as well. And you're going to grab your right ankle. And pull it back so that your left knee is facing, I'm sorry, right knee is facing directly forward. Right foot is still flexed. And then you're going to take that uh, left ankle and place the foot right on top of the uh, right thigh. So just coming into this posture on the other side, allowing the right leg, that right hip to internally rotate. So counterbalancing all of those things that we just did, making sure that your feet are as flexed as you can. So this allows us to protect that knee joint as we are in these poses. The ankles in line with the knees. So whenever we stack our joints properly, we're, um, we're essentially, when we stack our joints, we're in this optimal position where our muscles start to engage and our, and they, our muscles are supporting our joints rather than if we're not stacked we're sort of straining on if we're, our joints are not stacked on top of one another um, our ligaments and our all of our connective tissues are sort of straining into the joints to keep them together and keep them straight and we're allowing our the support to come from those ligaments rather than from the muscles so we always want the muscles to support our body And come back to the breath if you've lost it. Take a few more deep breaths here. And 
very slowly, you're going to start to take your knees up, soles of the feet flat on the mat. And then you're going to extend your legs straight out in front of you. So we're coming into, we're going to come into a fold. Ooh, this should feel nice. It's tight. It's the first sort of hamstring stretch in the morning. So you may need a couple props here. Um, I recommend getting a blanket and putting it right underneath your sit bones. Hi. No, honey. Not a dog to sit on, but a, <laughs> a blanket. Um, and put it right underneath your sit bones so it allows your, your pelvis to naturally tilt forward. So it's easier for you to fold forward across your legs. Come here, I want to snuggle you. Um, and then you're going to place um, as many pillows as you can on tops of your legs. So we're eventually going to fold forward over our legs, but we want this to be as sort of relaxed and as pa passive as possible. I'll just love you. Um, so gather as many props as you can um, to get yourself sort of set up in this nice, comfortable forward fold. So I'm going to get blanket. Place that under my sit bones, and I'm gonna get pillows as well. So, if you notice that um, my pelvis is already tilted forward, and I can much easier fold forward, hinge at my hips to fold when I am se seated upright. And then I'm gonna take several pillows and place it right on top of my thighs, and I'm just gonna fold forward. Um, over top of it. Allowing my arms to rest basically right on tops of my legs. And then you can grab onto whatever, you know, with your hands, you can grab onto your ankles and your shins, or anything that feels good. And just allow your upper body, if you'd like to turn your head to the side, um, that's okay on your neck, you can do that as well. And we're going to be holding this one for a little bit longer, so probably about five minutes. So make sure that you are in a more comfortable position and you have plenty of props here. And find your breath. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths to allow the back body to open up, the hamstrings, the spine. And it shouldn't, we shouldn't be like forcing ourselves into this pose, right? We definitely want this to be a more comfortable, restorative pose. The other thing that might help is placing a, a blanket or a pillow underneath your knees so that there's a slight bend into the knees and it's a little bit easier on the hamstrings. So just play around with your props. Get yourself as comfortable as you can. Always come back to that breath. So taking nice, slow, long, deep breaths.
noticing any sensations that have started to arise in the hamstrings, maybe in the low back. And just breathing through them. We'll be here for another minute. <laughs> Very, very slowly, you start to walk your hands up your legs, eventually coming up to an upright seated position. And then you're going to remove the pillows from on top of your legs. Um, we're going to turn to face the side of our mat and keep the pillow or keep that blanket underneath your sit bones if you have it but we're gonna take our legs out as wide as they go. So I'm gonna again have a blanket underneath my sit bones. We're gonna come into this sort of wide-legged fold. I'm gonna sit on this blanket and then take my legs out as wide as they go that's like sort of comfortable, like a very, very slight stretch. So you don't wanna be like cranking them open so much that you're like, oh, this is really painful in inner thighs, but just in, just to a place where you feel a stretch uh, along the inner, on the inner legs. Just a, a slight stretch, right? So not like anything crazy. And then um, again, you're gonna grab as many props as you can. We're gonna come into a fold this way. I'm gonna stack a bunch of pillows on top of one another, because I want this to be pretty comfortable. And then you're going to slowly start to, you're, you can take that, the um, props right up against your chest. And you're slowly going to start to fold over that way. And I'm just like holding on to my pillows to allow myself a little bit more um, space to rest on, right? So, and keep your feet flexed here. See if you can keep your toes pointing up towards the ceiling. And you may need to squeeze a little, your pods a little bit together or squeeze the kneecaps up towards your hips, squeezing your quads. Just protect the knees a little bit. So we're just holding here for a few minutes. Find as many props as you can to get yourself as comfortable as possible. Noticing all the things that started to come up already in this pose. So all along the inner thighs, all, the whole length of the leg on the inside. But then notice what this feels like on the pelvis and on the low back. Notice how that feels like a nice release of the low back and the spine.
And whenever you feel like your thoughts are going elsewhere, always come back to really nice, long, slow breaths. This feels really good. Did a long hike yesterday and the day before, so this hamstring and leg stuff feels extra good today. <laughs> mm. Take a few more deep breaths. Very slowly, you're going to start to walk yourself back up to this upright seated position. Remove those props out of the way to keep them nearby. We're going to come down to, on, to laying on our backs. So swing your legs out in front of you. And we're going to come down to our backs. Knees are bent, soles of the feet are flat on the mat. You're going to take um, your firmest pillow, or if you have a yoga block, even better. Um, you're going to take your firmest pillow or prop, whatever you've got, and hold it in your hands. Take your soles of, soles of your feet together, about hips width distance apart. So your toes should be, your second toe should be in line, um, in a straight line from your hip bones, your front hip bones. And you're going to take... Um, soles of your feet flat on the mat. You're going to press into the soles of your feet and start to lift your hips up off of the mat. Take that block or that pillow, whatever you've got, and slide it underneath your sacrum. So your sacrum, that bony part, is right above the tailbone, but not quite on the, lumb or on the um, lumbar spine. So it's the bony part of our pelvis right above our tailbone. Not really, not quite on our low back just on that, um, that part in between the lumbar spine and the tailbone on our pelvis. So we're in the supported bridge pose. And we're just gonna stay here for a few minutes and I'm gonna offer some deeper variations as we go through this, as we breathe through this. We're gonna stay here with our knees bent to start. Take your arms out next to you with the palms facing up. And take those nice, long, slow breaths. So an option here is to extend one leg straight at a time. So at first I'm going to take my left leg straight. The heel is rested, left heel is rested on the back. And this should be a, a pretty nice opening stretch in the left hip flexor when you straighten out the leg. So option to do one leg at a time, staying here for a minute or so and then switching. Another option is to, if, if your body allows it to straighten both legs at a time for the full variation of this yin style bridge pose. So if this is doable for you and you want to go for both legs straight, give it a shot. If not, straighten one leg at a time or just keep both legs bent, soles, both soles and the feet on the mat. Thank you. 
You find your breath. A few more deep breaths here. And slowly start to bend into the knees if your legs are straight. Place the soles of the feet flat onto the mat. Press into the feet to lift your hips off of your prop and remove the prop from underneath you and put it out of the way. And very slowly, you're going to start to drop your tailbone and your pelvis down to the mat. Straighten your legs and let your legs rest flat on the mat. Start to wiggle your, um, or start to move your heels towards the left side of your mat so that your, le your legs are at an ang angle. And then cross your right ankle over your left. And then take your arms up overhead, and we're going to do the same thing with our arms in that same direction. So you're going to start to um, take your arms out towards the left side of your mat, and then cross your right, um, let's see, yeah, right wrist over the left, and just clasp your hands together. Or actually, no, you're taking, let me think about this. Yeah, you're gra grasp your left with your left hand, take your right wrist and then just pull your right um, arm over towards the left. So we're coming into, it's called banana, not ban, bananasana, banana nasana, I think we're like a banana, right? We're shaped like a banana right now. So we're curving, we're keeping our pelvis where it is, but we're trying to open up the right side of the body by taking our legs and our arms out towards the left. And just allow your body to relax here. We'll be here for a few minutes. So you should feel a nice opening in the right side of your body. Now is a really good time to take some super deep breaths. And on your next inhale breath, you're going to start to wiggle your arms and your legs back towards center, straightening out the body, uncrossing the legs, and then just reach in opposite directions to give yourself a nice little stretch. Sort of like that good morning stretch. And you're going to take your legs, your ankles, out towards the right side of your mat, cross your left ankle over your right. And then start to take your shoulders and your... Um, <laughs> your arms over towards the right side take your with your right hand grasp your left wrist and just pull your arms over towards the right and then just settle in here allowing this time the left side body to open up and 
and find those nice deep breaths. Next inhale breath, we're going to start to come back to center, shifting the shoulders and the legs back towards center of our mat. And then sort of take your knees into your chest. So draw your knees towards your chest, and then just for a second, start to make some circles with the knees to massage the sacrum and the low back, and then reversing the direction of the circles. Cross your right knee over your left. Take your arms out wide like a T, and then just drop your knees towards the left. If you're finding that your right shoulder has lifted off of the mat when you do this, place a pillow underneath your knees. And we'll be here for a few minutes. I was saying anything that started to come up in the outer right hip, maybe in the spine, any tingling, just breathing through those sensations. Very gently, you're going to uncross the legs and take your knees back towards center. Draw your knees back into your chest. Allow your spine to reset for a moment. Take a deep breath in. And a deeper breath out. Start to cross the left knee over the right. And then draw, drop your knees towards the right side. If that left shoulder starts to peel off of the mat, place a pillow underneath your knees. And settle in here. We'll be here for a few minutes.
last deep breath in. And you're slowly going to bring your knees back to center, drawing them back into your chest, giving yourself one little last squeeze. And then eventually making your way to your final resting pose, Shavasana. So extending your legs out straight, heels resting onto the mat, arms are out by your sides. So the outer edges of your feet are flopping down towards the mat. Pick up your tailbone for a moment, your hips, and then just pull your tailbone down towards your heels so that you're resting more on the sacrum. And then do the same thing with your shoulders. So pull your shoulder blades off of the mat and pull them together underneath you so that your collarbone is broadened. And go ahead and close your eyes if they, have, if they aren't already. And just find full relaxation in the body. So if there's any place that you're sort of holding on tension to, that you're squeezing or gripping, just let it go. Allowing the jaw to be slack, neck is long, tongue is removed from the roof of your mouth. The crease in your brow is unfurled. You just find this final moment to find some peace and relaxation. And please stay here for as long as you'd like, up to five minutes at least. And I'm just going to mute the video, but you're here as long as you'd like. And um, just relax, let go of the breath. Um, thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you guys soon.